we move on to the next part of our series and we will be discussing peripheral eruptions and discommutative erythemas we will be discussing five conditions which have peripheral eruptions now the rash in rocky mountain spotted fever starts on the wrist and ankles as you can see here and it appears later in the palm and soles remember the fact that it appears later in the palm and soles the macules will be blanchable that is they will go away on pressing and then they will come back the patient will also have headache myalgias and abdominal pain 40% patients die if this goes untreated so the rash is kind of important syphilis on the other hand will have a rash on the palm and soles quite early on in the presentation as opposed to rocky mountain where it appeared later in the course Condyloma latum is a cutaneous condition where wart like lesions appear on the genitals. The lesion in chikungunya is non specific and you will have to depend on history like a recent mosquito bite and symptoms like arthralgia in small joints like hands, wrists and ankles. Erythema multiforme has target lesions. Can you tell me which other disease has target lesions? Lyme disease caused by Borrelia burgdorferi. Remember that in Borrelia infection, you got Bell's palsy, myocarditis and arthritis in later stages. Here you won't get such symptoms. Apart from herpes simplex and mycoplasma, sulfur drugs, phenytoin and penicillin can also induce erythema multiforme. Last of all, we have endocarditis and here we will get Osler's node in the subacute form which is caused by strep viridens and Janeway lesions in the acute form caused by Staph aureus. Osler's nodes are pink nodules in the fingers while Janeway lesions are painless macules on the palm and soles. Remember that viridian strep attacks the abnormal heart valves. Moving on to discommutative erythemas, scarlet fever is caused by group A strep and affects children between 2 and 10 years old and it follows group A pharyngitis infection. TSS stands for toxic shock syndrome, quadruple S stands for staph phylococcus scarlet skin syndrome. DRESS stands for drug rash with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms and SJS stands for Steven Johnson syndrome. The skin in scarlet fever will have a sandpaper like texture and you may see circumoral pallor. You can also see accentuated erythematous lines in the skin folds. These are called pastia lines. Red strawberry tongue will also be seen. Where else do you get a strawberry tongue? In Kawasaki disease. In Kawasaki disease, we have a scarlet fever like rash, thus we call it a scarlatini form rash. It will be seen in children less than 8 years old and you will see symptoms like pharyngitis, vasculitis etc. Toxic shock syndrome will involve diffuse erythema and discommation 7 to 10 days later. Patient will have hypotension when he presents to you in the emergency. Scalded skin syndrome will have widespread discommation. Nikolsky sign is when you rub the top layers of the skin, they will separate and the inner layers of the skin can be seen. The patient will be most likely a child below 10 years old or an adult with renal dysfunction. In exfoliative erythroderma syndrome, you will see patients with underlying dermatological conditions like eczema, psoriasis or mycosis fungoides. Scales will be seen in between erythematous regions as you can see here and the patient will be a male over 50 years of age. Dress is also known as drug induced hypersensitivity syndrome and as the name suggests anticonvulsants sulfonamides are in the etiology. It will mimic an exanthematous drug rash and we, as we discussed in the previous video that exanthem is a rash with systemic symptoms like fever. Dress may progress to exfoliative erythroderma syndrome. SJS and toxic epidermonecrolysis are diseases in a spectrum. SJS is the mild version and it leads to toxic epidermal necrolysis. Drugs like allopurinol and anticonvulsants cause SJS. Infection can also be a factor. As, a, as you can see in the first image, SJS involves less than 10% area while toxic epidermal necrolysis covers more than 30%. Predisposition is seen in HIV and SLE patients or those who are slow acetylators of allopurinol and anticonvulsants. This is all for today. If you like this video, do hit like and subscribe. See you in the next one.